Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to Vibin' with Ashley Live. I'm your host, Ashley Live, and today we have an incredible show for you guys. I just want to say, first off, I hope you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving and, and enjoying your beautiful long extended weekends. Uh, whether you are by yourself or whether you're with friends and family, please continue to stay safe as um, coronavirus is going up all across the country. So today we have a great show for you guys. We have Whitney Shea. She's a singer songwriter based out of San Diego and she's won countless awards. I'm really excited to bring her in the room and introduce her to you guys as she's just such an energetic, beautiful, positive performer. So if you guys don't know by now, I always start the show with a song lyric. So today's song lyric is actually going to be from Whitney and she just hopped in the room. So I'm actually gonna bring Whitney in and then share her song lyric with all of you. Okay, so Whitney, if you can just request me really quick so I can invite you in the room. Okay, there she is. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. So I was just introducing you to the room. Um, and I was telling everybody that was in the room that how I usually start this show is with a song lyric. So I chose to use one of your songs for the song lyric. And then, awesome. yes. So um, let's get right into it. So the song lyric that I'm going to use is from Whitney's album stand up and this is from the song stand up yes consideration i never asked for more we both know how hard it is to find something worth fighting for now we're stepping on a shattered staircase just footsteps from the door once the stars were in our eyes now we're staring down at the floor so do you want to elaborate on what those lyrics mean to you sure um so my writing partner, um, Adam J. Eros and I, um, we kind of had an idea. So my, my last album, um, which was great, we wrote four original four songs for it. So this one was solely an original focus. So when we kind of came up with the idea for this song, it was about a situation that I was in where it was, the person knew that something was wrong. Yeah. But they, they weren't speaking up about it. Mm. And they weren't. Um, so it's just, it's, and, and I think that's applicable to a lot of things in general, especially now. Like, right. just being able to, like, stand up for, you know, when you know something is right, when you know, like, something is wrong, like, speak up about it. And right. I think too often people are afraid to speak up about it. So specifically with that lyric, um, you know, you could talk about like the the glass ceiling, you know, we kind of like the shattered staircase. We kind of had that like imagery. Um, once the stars were in my eyes, now I'm staring at down at the floor. It's like maybe, you know, at one time I was, you know, had my head in the clouds, but now I'm back to reality because I see that you're not going to be that person that I thought you were and you're not going to stand up. So. Yeah. Well, thank you for that because I think the song is so powerful and it can mean so many things to so many different people, right? It can also be a political statement, right? Definitely. Stand up what you believe in and always make sure that your voice is heard, whatever that might mean to, because, you know, it can be interpreted in a lot of different ways. Definitely, 100%. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about your childhood. How old were you when you got into music and who inspired you? So I got into music really young. Um, I started doing musical theater when I was three. So um, wow. I, I think I started singing even before that. Um, according to my mom, I started singing like as soon as I could speak. But um, I, I did theater for a long time and pursued that and got my degree in theater. And then about 10 years ago, that's when I made the transition to live music and singing with bands. And it's just been an amazing journey. I've been able to tour all over the world now at this point. Um, I've been recognized in my hometown and for national awards. And it's it's all kind of surreal if you would have told me 10 years ago that I would be in this place. Well, especially this year, but yeah. you know, <laughs> if I would be here now, I, I never would have thought that, so. Mm -hmm. 
but it's always good to have these big dreams and then achieve them, right? Because, you know, we always think like, where would we be in five years, 10 years, you know, 15 years? Where do you see your career going in the next five years? That's a great question. Um, I've been asking myself that a lot, especially <laughs> given the, the state of things this year. So I think um, this year was going to be a, probably my biggest year ever because the whole year I was booked to tour all over the world and I've never really toured this extensively. So yeah. I was going to be in Europe, in Brazil, um, and the U S and then obviously everything, you know, got canceled with COVID. So I think in five years, I see myself touring consistently in Europe and having, um, a career overseas and hopefully bigger nationally um, with the music that I love to do, which is, you know, blues and soulful music. There's always been a really great appreciation for American music overseas. Mm -hmm. So I would love to be able to take advantage of that more. And plus, I mean, getting to travel and do what you love. It's the best thing in the world. Yeah. So, so you were saying that you had this tour booked. Yeah. yeah. You actually started some of that tour early this year, January. I did. Exactly. In, and then you were in, in um, Germany, correct? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, I was in Germany. We did 26 shows in 30 days. What? Um, yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> wow. But it was it was amazing. Um, and German, um, really nice, like small theaters. And yeah. um, I was touring with uh, the Roof Records Blues Caravan. So they do this um, every year. They have a group of three artists on the label and they put us on a tour together with a backing band and we were set to tour all over Europe. We were set to do the legendary rhythm and blues cruise. We were set to do a lot of festivals in the U S and then everything kind of got put on hold for COVID with COVID. So hi. Oh, hi, Igor. I have a good friend in Brazil who's watching us right now. Oh, oh thank you. So, for yeah, and we appreciate it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but all of that kind of got put on hold. So it, It'll be interesting to see, you know, everybody's trying to conjecture as to when things are going to open back up next year. We're hoping that, you know, summer, you know, hopefully next year, um, the festivals will come back. Hopefully I can come to Brazil soon. Um, that's a big goal. But yeah, so I was really grateful to be able to start the year, you know, being in Russia and Germany. And then I came back March 1st and then things shut down March 14th. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> I know it was so crazy how everything shut down so quickly, but you were gone for like the first two months out of the year. Yep, pretty much. Yeah. Wow. So, so what was one of the most memorable things about those two months for you? Oh, man, there's so many great memories. Um, you know, one of my favorite um, shows that we got to play was a, a really small like city in Bavaria um, mm -hmm. in Germany. And, it was on a Monday night of all nights. And <laughs> just the people in that town, a lot of times when you get to play in small cities, people, because there's not a lot going on as far as entertainment, like like in New York or like in big cities, you can go out every night and see, well, before yeah. this, you can go out every night and do something. Right. But there, there's not as much. So people are just so appreciative of the music on almost a different level. So it's really amazing to, to get to do that. We did like encores and people were like standing ovation and everybody was dancing in the room. I mean, that was just so fun. Uh -huh. How did you guys pick the shows and the places that you did overseas? So luckily this tour has been around, I think this is the 15th or 20th uh, <laughs> version of this tour. So oh. the tour itself has a following, which is cool. Um, a lot of, music fans know the label especially in germany it's a german label mm -hmm. um so specifically there they have a big following for that tour and it has a great name so um i, I just kind of got to show up and sing which was really awesome that doesn't happen very very often so i was very grateful for that very cool so other than germany and russia and all these other places that you've gone to because you did tour overseas do you any specific venues or cities that you enjoy playing in? God, every city I've been to has been amazing. Um, I love, I'm from San Diego, I'm born and raised. That's where I am right now. Yeah. So I love playing at home. Um, although I was excited to spread my wings a little bit more this year, but I've primarily played at home for the last 10 years. And then about five years ago, I started touring in Brazil. So I've toured pretty extensively in Brazil all over, um, in the South, the North, the center, um, 
but the, the musician Igor and a lot of the musicians I play with are based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. <laughs> um, so it's always fun to get to tour in Brazil. Last year, I got to do some touring in France, um, which was awesome. I played a festival in Bordeaux. I also got to play in Helsinki, Finland, wow. and Sweden, and um, Spain, and where else? I got to play a really amazing festival in um, Geildorf, Germany. Mm -hmm. um, which was a big festival about, I think, 5,000 people at that festival in this big tent. I miss those days when we got to play big festivals, you know? Those right. are the or just playing to a room of 10 people. That too. I miss, I miss all of the things. <laughs> <laughs> you so know, how... feel... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, after you. <laughs> um, I feel really glad that in San Diego, we're really lucky that the weather is so good, so we can still do outdoor shows. I mean, in winter, in December. How how cold is it in New York right now? Um, it's like forty. So I mean, you know, I mean, the, the the wind hits you, it feels cold enough. Um, you have to bundle up if you want to go outside in New York. I mean, yeah, I would stand outside for a concert, but you know, I would just be kind of just moving. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was like forty at night here last night, which is like the coldest we'll get. So yeah. But you're still lucky that you can perform in San Diego, whereas like, I feel so grateful. Thank God, you know. Mm -hmm. So how is it, you know, you had this whole extensive tour schedule planned. How are you adjusting with that crazy reality of, oh, my God, no, we all have to stay home? Yeah, it's, you know, it's been interesting. Um, I think it's really amazing that because of social media, like, there's such an, and, and specifically in the blues world, there's such an international community. So like I can talk to my friends overseas and kind of everybody is going through the same thing right now, which is, you know, nice and kind of strange because none of us have ever been in this situation before. Um, but I think at the end of the day, like we all have to learn this year, a sense of balance and learning to, um, I don't know, accept what the world gives you kind of with grace and resilience. I think that's the biggest lesson I've taken from this year. I've really tried to stay busy creatively, like doing different collaborative projects, um, trying to write for a new album. And also like, I've been taking online classes too, because you know, I'm like, when am I gonna have the time to do this? So I've been taking music classes and graphic design, so. Yeah, and you're staying busy and you're just like, okay, what more creatively can I do on my end to better myself and be, you know, have all these really cool things going on because you have to have things to look forward to. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, like a lot of musicians that I've talked to and a lot of people in general in the world were like, you know, they're realizing now being home, they're like, wow, first of all, maybe this is a lot of people, they're seeing their spouses or their families for the first time, like more than they ever have, you know? Right? Yeah. Um, and also I, I think it's taught us all like, wow, there is maybe, especially in America, I think we're really in love with this, you know, um, live to work as opposed to like in other countries and cultures where they, they more work to live. So I think it's kind of taught us this balance a little bit more that maybe like, we don't have to completely be identified by our careers, you know, and that's, that's been a difficult, but also really empowering lesson to learn I think mm -hmm. yeah because in other countries it's like oh they have that siesta time where they shut everything exactly. down right and and new specifically, specifically New York but all over the U.S. I feel like it's just like work 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 yes exactly exactly yeah so it's definitely forced us to take our time and just be with ourselves and focus on self-care and just focus on like what we really want out of our lives right mm-hmm how would you describe the music that you create? I would, I always like to say high energy rhythm and blues. Um, you know, I say soulful music, you know, with a large umbrella, because I think when you start to like get genre specific saying like blues or jazz or soul, like, you know, there's a lot of people who are like purists who are like, oh, well, it's not exactly that. Like I, I could say blues, but like, am I doing Chicago blues like BB King? No, like that's not really what I'm doing. So I, I would say like, yeah, contemporary rhythm and blues music, you know, high energy. I, I love to do songs that make people dance and I love to bring joy to people. I feel like that's why I was put on this earth is to, you know, perform 
four people and you know help them forget about their day that's that's my goal in life if i can do that for somebody so i mean you're definitely doing that just oh. i've never seen you perform live but i've seen your videos online and and your photos i'm like she's having so much fun up there if i could just have like an ounce of what she has in my pinky finger like i'd be good <laughs> i think you've got it i think you've got it in all both your hands i think you've got it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you i appreciate that well how would you describe your creative process so it's been well especially now it's been really interesting um you know before specifically when i was writing for the albums i was like okay here's like the deadline you know we're gonna try to like get in as many times as um i could meet i write with a writing partner um he's an amazing composer and we you know met in person so now everything's changed a little bit you know because we try to meet on zoom and you know occasionally we try to do you know the distance in person sessions when we can too um, but it, it's been interesting, like, because I've talked to a lot of singer friends of mine who are like, okay, well, I'm going to learn guitar when I have time. Oh, I'm going to write more when I have time. And now we have time. So it's like, now this is the time to challenge yourself. Is this something that you really want to do? Is this something that's really a priority? Mm -hmm. So I've definitely like found myself shedding things. Like sometimes I like to take on too many things. Yeah. in life like I'm like oh I'm gonna take this class I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this and now I'm trying to be like no I don't need to fill my schedule like some days it's just good to like just write some yeah. days it's good to just start journaling just come up with a melody so I'm kind of a stream of consciousness person if I'm if I'm in the shower and I want to grab my phone and record a little voice memo you know I'll do that and then I'll come back to it and try to expand on that idea mm -hmm. so so do you feel you come up with the lyrics first or the melody or is it a little combination of both? It's a little combination of both. Usually I come up with like a line or like a hook and sometimes I'll have like um, a melody line for that in my head. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, you know, what you come up with on the spot needs reworking. You know, I, I'm not always married to everything that I create right then. But, you know, it's been... It's been challenging and I've been on myself. You can see I got my guitar in the corner right here, but I'm trying to make myself um, play guitar more so I can help with just the cording and just writing down the music because currently I don't play an instrument well enough, you know, to like compose music. I just come up with the melody and the lyrics and then, you know, meet with my writing partner and then we figure it out. Not yeah. that, that. <laughs> Right. And you're like, okay, what do you think of this? And like, oh, I haven't looked at this for three days. Maybe exactly. Record it. Yeah, exactly. So as far as guitar, are you taking lessons or are you just teaching yourself? So I've taken lessons over the years, but you know, I'm a terrible guitar student. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> uh, um, I just don't practice. And um, I've talked to like friends of mine and they, they have the same problem because because I've been singing so long, it's right. something that I'm, you know, inherently good at, you know, but when you're starting a new instrument, you have to be a novice again. And that's like a big thing for the ego to get over. <laughs> you know? They're like, oh, I know what this should sound like, but it doesn't. I can't make my fingers do that yet. So. Yeah, because then you have to build the calluses up on your fingers and then you're exactly. like, okay. Yeah, I, I've, I've been messing around. I have a guitar here as well. My mom's like, you need to play it. You need to play it. I'm like, it's actually like much harder than you think. It's a lot. It's a lot harder, especially because I know so many amazing guitarists. So that's why I'm right. like. <laughs> but hey, all beginners at one time and they just practice, practice, practice. So practice. <laughs> speaking of, you're heavily, you're heavily inspired by Bonnie Raitt as well yeah. as Names. So what about these powerful women inspire you? There's Edda right there on my wall. Um, <laughs> let's see her at last. I don't have a Bonnie record. I need to add that to here. Um, both of them, I, I feel like uh, Edda for a long time was my favorite singer. And she still is one of my favorite singers. But the thing about Edda that I love so much is that she sang so many different genres of music. And like I, uh, like I always say, soulful music, because over the years, I've done a lot of um, different styles in the jazz and blues idioms, you know, mostly like older soulful music. But at the same time, like I kind of like to jump around mm -hmm. genre wise. And the thing I love about Edda was whatever she sang, 
she was 100% genuine and honest. And that's what I, I've always strived to be in myself is just to be genuine when I sing. A, a friend of mine told me years ago, don't ever sing anything that you don't love because it will show through. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I've, I've always strived. And Bonnie, God, she's another one who just the sincerity in her voice, I think right. just carries so much. And her, God, I mean, years, like she's been in the business since the 70s. And she still sounds amazing and is still like the consummate professional. I got to see her, I got to play at a festival with her five years ago and she made me cry. It was so good, so good. That's amazing. Did you get a chance to meet her? No, I wish. No, it was it was pretty um, locked down, you know, as far as like the backstage area where she was. So yeah. and I wasn't allowed to go to her trailer or anything. So next time, someday, Bonnie, <laughs> I'm gonna open for you. Yes, and when you put it into the universe, like you're gonna meet her. Yeah, definitely. Was that the first time you saw her play in public? Uh, it was in person, yeah, it was. Very cool. So what other musicians do you admire? God, there's so many. Well, this is my wall of inspiration, as I like to call it. Um, I can go through it with you. So I've yeah. got Ray Charles up in the top, this corner. And yeah. then that's Amy King. Um, I have Matt King called Jackie Wilson. Little Richard is one of my favorites because if I have like a performer goal, like I want to be like Little Richard because his energy was just an 11 all the time. And not only could he play and sing great, but he's just on fire in right. life. Right. And I love that. And uh, Otis Redding, of course. I mean, it's amazing what he did. You know, he died at 26. And if you look at the catalog of music that he released, before he turned 26, it's kind of insane. He released so many albums. Right. Um, Nina Simone, amazing performer and civil rights activist and just incredible. Donny Hathaway, Sam Cooke, um, Candy Staten, uh, Julie London. Melody Gardot is a contemporary artist. Hang on. Do not serve. And then Lake Street Dive is another band. They're in New York, actually, that I, I really love. But I don't know. I just, I always constantly am trying to discover new things that I find soulful and, you know, can, can pull inspiration from. So those are some of my favorites. And I like how they're all behind you because the thing is when, when people are like, oh, who are you inspired by? Like, you know, who motivates you? Most people don't have it, like, right in front of them. <laughs> You're like, not like, oh, here, here's my wall. <laughs> and it's good because you're staring at them and you're like, yes, what can I take from Edda? What can I take from this person? Like, how can I be more like that person? Yeah, definitely. Who would you like to collaborate with? Oh, God, I would love to collaborate with, I love Mavis Staples so much. She's another one that's still... God, if I could sing. Or Ruthie Foster is another great singer out of Austin, Texas that I absolutely adore. Um, but God, there, there's so many. As far as like male mm -hmm. artists, I would love to, um, JD McPherson is a, a great um, singer songwriter. He's kind of like early rock and roll, Little Richard. Um, I saw him a couple years ago at the Belly Up and he was great. Uh, ZZ Ward is another one, mm -hmm. he's a contemporary artist. So yeah, these are some people that I, I love and would love to collaborate with. Yeah, it's very cool. And you pick some incredible people. Well, there's a lot of talent in the world. So, <laughs> And the thing is, like what I say on the show is the reason I ask you like musicians these questions is because then it's in the universe, right? And like, say for instance, that person sees this video and you're like, I said that four years ago that this was going to happen. I love that. Well, you know, it's so funny that I did that a couple years ago. I was like, I'm going to tour in Europe. That's been my goal for 10 years. And then last year I got to make that a reality. Like I got to play a festival in Europe. And then, you know, this year I got to play in Europe. So I feel, hi there. You got some new people joining us. Yes. Thank you guys so much for joining us. What are your favorite songs to perform? You know, oh God, I have so many. Um, lately, I'm really loving singing a Bonnie Raitt song. I've been doing... Um, the song Nick of Time, and I love it so much. Um, but you know, lately, it's been doing my original music, which is um, 
it, it's a newer thing for me because I sang in the blues and, and jazz genres. And like in those genres, it's kind of acceptable to do, you know, cover material. That's it's kind of part of the idiom. But now, like writing my music and seeing people dance and seeing people like, oh, I love your song. Yeah. I'm like, I created that. I mean, that's <laughs> something I've always wanted to do. And I, I felt like I never wanted to, um, you know, really tour and, and promote myself on a bigger scale until I was an original artist. And now I can say that I am. And like, crazy enough, in the middle of the pandemic in April, I had my first album of original music reach number one on the Billboard Blues charts, which is like insane to me, you know, that that happened. So, yeah. Yes, and that's absolutely incredible because you're like, whoa. Yeah, that's such a huge accomplishment. So congrats, congrats on that. So I guess we're gonna get right into it. Your album Stand Up was released in February and like you just said, it hit number one on Billboard Blues albums charts. What was the inspiration behind this album? So um, this was my first record with um, Roof Records out of Germany. And um, I just wanted to write a record that was kind of, so I went to Austin, Texas to record this. And I think that the album is very s steeped in like the Austin blues sound. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to create kind of a um, soulful, but like gritty, you know, sound. Whereas my second album had been more, I would say like older jazz blues inspired. And my first album was more, you know, I would say like Amy Winehouse kind of early soul tinged. Um, and that was, I, my first record was, was done with a producer and I was just starting out. So I felt like I didn't really know myself. The second one, I was like, okay, this is, I know myself, this mountain, but this one is like, wow, I'm in my thirties. I really know who I am. Mm -hmm. This is an album about my personal experiences. And one of the songs I wrote, you know, was a super personal song for me, um, which was a letter to somebody that passed away that I never really got to meet and somebody in my like immediate, you know, family circle. Um, and so it was the song, someone I, you never got to know. And when we recorded that, I cried in the studio, the first vocal take. And that's the one we kept, which is hard for me. Cause I was just like, Oh man, this, this song is like a lot, but that was the thing about this album was it was so personal mm -hmm. and I'd never really done that before. I'd never let people in on that level. So it felt good to be able to do that. Yeah, because then you're coming across as genuine and- Exactly. Kind. So it's like, it's not like, oh, you're just singing a random song. Like you're singing a song that's extremely personal to you that now you're singing it in front of people. And it's just like, that emotion is so real. And we as fans can definitely feel that when we listen and we watch people perform how personal it is to you. Right. Right. So your virtual album release party is <laughs> number this was supposed to have arch like in a live setting, but as you know, the whole world has gone kapook, right? So now it's actually happening December twentieth. You're gonna be joined by some of San Diego's most talented musicians. What else can you tell people about your release party? So um I, you know, it's, it's interesting because a virtual release is almost better, but, uh, but different, you know, right. it's better because everyone around the world can be there and watch it, which is cool. I mean, I've never done that before. So I'm, I'm taking that as a plus. Right. Um, obviously it's going to be different because we can't be in person together. But, um, I think the great thing about all of this is artists are finding new ways to pivot. So we're going to be, you know, in a really great like recording studio with multi cameras. So you'll be able to get lots of different views and see the whole band. We're going to do, this is my first time getting to play the entire album with horns, you know, which is like, Oh, thank God I get to play with <laughs> horns again. Yes. And full band. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited. You know, it, it was hard because like you said, we had this scheduled for March and then it got pushed back to June and yeah. then it got pushed back again. You know, the, the belly up where um, it's funny. I saw Buddy Guy play there a week before my show was supposed to be. And then, you know, things shut down. And um, so it was kind of a bummer. 
but I, I will say that it's, I'm glad that I, I, I was going to put it off and put it off. And I said, you know what? I can't let 2020 go by. I can't let 2020 get the best of me. We're going to have this virtual release and we're going to celebrate because people, like you said, people need things to look forward to this we year. Do. We do. Cause it's like the same exact day every day. And I'm like, I grabbed right? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, we used to go to like our favorite happy hours or, oh, you have tickets to a show Saturday or, oh, you have two shows next week. So it's like, what do we have to look forward to? So having things and live streams and really amazing things to look forward to is so, so, so important. So thank you so much for actually doing this and having this date and pushing it. And now we get to see the album in its entire entirety, just how you want it to be shown. Yeah. And they, I'm going to put the link to my website. I just updated my website calendar today. And so that, sorry, I'm typing, but that um, <laughs> is on my website so they can buy tickets directly through there. They're only $10. I tried to make it, you know, affordable so everybody can come and, you know, watch it from their homes. Right. Um, also, if you're on this Instagram live right now and you wanna buy some merch, I've got CDs and vinyl and cards there's this discount code that I'm going to put. So if you want to go buy something from my website, the discount code is 2020. Super easy to remember. And that's 20% off of anything. So you can buy a pin, you can buy a CD, a vinyl, and come celebrate. But I hope you guys will all be there for the virtual album release. We're going to have Laura Chavez, who played on the record. Um, she's going to be on the show. Um, an amazing rhythm section, my regular band with horns. Oh, I just, I'm so excited about it. Yay! Yes. WhitneyShay.com and the discount code is 2020. So please use it. And that's exclusively for the people that are watching and joining us right now. So thank you for doing that. And we're so excited to, to see this party and, and have a good time. And plus we can do it with people all over the world. Exactly. Exactly. Definitely. So what artists or genres of music have you been listening to in 2020? God, there's been a few different ones. Um, I've been taking some classes. So one of the classes I was taking was a jazz vocal class and we were doing um, a Brazilian jazz unit. And so we were listening to a lot of bossa nova. So I started kind of dipping my toes into that more like listening to some Ellis Regina and some of that. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Bonnie, like early Bonnie Raitt. I've been listening to some John Cleary. He's an amazing artist out of New Orleans. Mm -hmm. um, it just depends on the day. Some days, you know, I don't know about you, but I love to go through these YouTube rabbit holes. Sometimes you'll like listen to a YouTube video and then it'll take you some other artist. You're like, oh, that song is so good. Oh, that's you're like, who is that? Yeah, and then exactly. you're like, four hours later, you're just like, whoa. You're yeah. like, wow, how did I get to this point? <laughs> That's the power of YouTube. It's just like it no it's like, okay, we're listening to this this song and then all of a sudden four hours later you're like, Whoa, that was that was fun. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, this not December twenty second, December twentieth. Twentieth. Twelve twenty twenty twenty. I'm gonna put that in oh, here. Twelve twenty twenty. <laughs> I that's I did it that way on purpose. It's a Sunday. So I put that on there for the for the album release. Twelve twenty. Listen to, aw, thank you so much. Listen to my <laughs> own stuff. I feel like I listen to my own stuff a lot. <laughs> what song do you wish you wrote and why? Oh, God. Um, well, I wish I can't wrote, I can't make you love me. I think that is the one of the greatest songs. It's on the list of the greatest songs of all time. Right. Um, that's one that just kills me every time I listen to. Um, a writer that I really love, she's right here, um, as far as like contemporary artists, is the singer Melody Gardot. I think her lyrics are just super brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, just really, her imagery is ama amazing. And she's been an artist I've watched for a long time and kind of bit looked up to as far as where she's taken her career and and kind of how she's been able to kind of skirt genre lines, but create something totally original in herself that's just so captivating. Every time I've seen her in concert a few times and she's just amazing. Um, so anything she writes, I would love to write that. But um, but yeah, like, 
I don't know. I, I, I would love to write a new standard. Like, I think Adele is kind of a good model for, like, here's somebody who listens to a lot of soulful music and wrote a lot of stuff almost modeling that but made it in a contemporary era and right. i think amy winehouse is another one who is like yeah. god her one of the songs i love so much that she wrote is i heard love is blind mm -hmm. and um she's just so witty and almost it's a little it, it's a little raw like it's almost a little too raw she says some stuff sometimes and you're just like cringing almost because you're like wow did she really say that but she but did and if she I, could get I love that she did that. It was so unabashedly yeah. her, you know? I love that. Hi. Oh, my gosh. You got some friends on right now. Yes. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Now, if you couldn't do music, what other career path would you choose? Good question. I've thought about that a lot, especially this year. Um, so I, I used to, I, for a while, I was thinking about going to law school for a long time. I've always been interested in that. And I also was looking into uh, marriage and family therapy. I mm -hmm. thought about um, doing that. I've always kind of talked to my friends and, and tried to, you know, help them through working through situations. So that was kind of a career path I looked into. You know, that's it's the interesting thing. I've been a full time artist for almost 10 years now. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. But obviously, as anybody knows, in in the world, being a full-time artist is it's a commitment it's a struggle and especially this year you know with our industry and multiple industries in the entertainment you know kind of umbrella shut down it's something that a lot of people a lot of my friends have pivoted and, and gotten out of the business just because they need to make a living they've got kids they have mortgages and i've been really fortunate that i've been able to do a few little gigs here and there and um you know, gotten unemployment. And then I've been able to keep busy, you know, doing classes and, and creating. So I'm just hoping that, you know, things are going to open up again soon, but trying to keep positive every day, because that's what we have to do to get through this year, I think, and stick right. together. Yeah, stick together and be creative and like, focus on yourself and what you can do to, to get to the next level. Because I've, I've definitely heard about other musicians that are just like, well, do I continue to do this? Like, right. Um, like what do I do but then you kind of have to you just look at your iPhone and you're like there's so much I can do with this right 100% right. I think that's the thing is we can't give up you know we can't give up hope and we all have iPhones and there's just so much to do with an iPhone like 10 15 years ago we didn't have these devices and now it's like this is kind of the answer to everything is just like that's what musicians have been doing they're live streaming they're doing covers maybe they go live every Friday night and and it's so helpful for us fans to see that because it's like, oh my gosh, every Friday night, you know, this musician goes live. So I feel like I'm a part of their community and I have that thing to look forward to. I have some singer friends, my friend Lauren. She's great, low-key Lauren Lee. Lauren Lee on, on Spotify, check her out. She's got a great EP out. I, I like to promote my friends. Yeah, um, I'm Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I, I think that's that's a big thing though the most important thing of all this is musicians reaching out to one another. I've been really trying to keep up with my other musician friends because we really need to check in on each other because, you know, for everyone, I think this year has been challenging, but for to have your industry completely shut down, right. you know, it's, it's really difficult mentally, you know, for a lot of people and having, not having that social interaction. So I think that's super important. A lot of us, used to get our escape and our respite, you know, going out and seeing other friends play when we weren't playing. Right. So, yeah, but now, like, if we don't reach out to one another and we don't connect, at least virtually, you know, it, it's really difficult. So I, I think that's something we all have to remember is just stay positive and be kind to one another and reach out to your friends. Yeah, definitely reach out to your friends because you never know. Like, people, you think they're okay, but they might not be okay. And it's just like you know, you have good and bad days, right? Yeah, like, oh, I'm going to do like these 10 things on my to-do list. And other days you wake up, you're like, not feeling it today. Definitely. That, and that that's true too. That's a big one is like, sometimes just finding motivation to do things is, is difficult. But, you know, nobody's going to do it for you. So. <laughs> so what's the best advice you've ever been given? Um, God. There's so much. Um, like I said, one of my friends saying, don't ever sing anything 
that you're not in love with. That was some really good advice. But also, I think just always, always be kind, mm -hmm. you know, always try to be professional no matter what. Because I, I learned that a long time ago when I was going to school for theater was because you never know when, you know, that person who is like signing people up at a casting notice is going to be like the CEO next year of, of some company. Right. So you should always be like nice to other people, you know, but um, just work hard. I think that that's, that's a big piece of advice that I got just, learning by doing from my mother and learning in this business i think that if you do work hard i think good things come out of it yeah. if nothing else you'll grow as a performer as a human but if you work hard i truly believe if you work hard and you stay focused things will happen for you they've happened for me and and i feel super grateful um but i really i i say that it's a testament to just I just kept going and I kept working and this year is a setback for a lot of us but it doesn't mean that it's a setback it doesn't mean that it's a total shutdown you right. know although it might be a physical lockdown and shutdown it doesn't mean that we have to stop creating and we have to stop doing yeah because there's oh thanks Jesse there's always a silver lining in this. Like, yes, I mean, I was talking to my friend about this um, yesterday and I was like, yeah, the first three weeks of this, I didn't know what was happening. And I was like, what's going on? And then I'm like, no, no, every day, I'm just like, stay positive, do the best you can and just try to continue to grow, whatever that might be, reading a book, writing a song, maybe binge watching a series, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like sometimes it doesn't always look as creative as I would like it to be, but you do have to, to lean into that and just, mm -hmm. Be, and be kind to others, but also be kind to yourself. Because sometimes we're our own worst critics. That's a big one. That's right. a big one. I, you know, I've been trying to challenge myself with that more. Just even like putting up content or doing things like this, you right. know, where you just, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm a Virgo. So I'm very, I, I uh, am very nitpicky and very self-critical. <laughs> so I never like to put videos of myself singing up. I'm very self-conscious about that. For some reason, when it's live, you just get it out, but I don't have to watch it later. But when I, when I video <laughs> myself, when I have to watch it, I'm like, oh, what was I doing? Right. <laughs> so just being able to just put stuff out there and, and being okay with it not being perfect all the time. Yeah that's the great thing about this live streaming thing some people are really good at that and they're just okay with letting go but for me i think that's been really good is just i'm just gonna do this and hopefully it's good and you know hopefully people <laughs> like well it's kind of like the same thing with my show like i told you before i have questions ready for you but we might not even have, we might not even go through any of those questions we might just kind of go in a whole different direction but you know you just kind of have to go with the flow of it because right like your first live stream might not be great but what about your 10th or your 15th or you do a collaboration with someone and it's kind of like oh that actually was pretty cool yeah totally um, I, I agree <laughs> so tell everybody right now who's watching where they can find you what's coming up how can we support you as an artist right now okay so big thing coming up 12 20 2020 so sunday december 20th virtual album release party yay i couldn't let the whole year go by without doing it so <laughs> gonna be on Enterzoc media you can go to my website which she pinned in the chat wittyshay.com and that's got the link you can buy tickets only 10 bucks you can watch from your living room in your pajamas full band of horns it's gonna be awesome i can't wait um you can go to my website and find out. I've, I'm having little shows here and there. Um, you can also follow me here on Instagram or Facebook because I, I'm doing kind of secret little shows too, you know, so I might post them the day of on my Instagram story. So you can come and check those out if you want to come in person and safely distance and safely watch that. Also, if you want to buy merch on my website, I put a discount code for anybody watching here. It's 2020 and that's 20% off. So enjoy that discount code you can uh, buy a pin or a cd or vinyl and that that's the biggest way that you can support me or any artist right now is buy music buy you know spotify is great but i think I, everybody knows that spotify artists you know don't get paid i think my 
head of my record label told me it's like a million streams equals a thousand album sales or something along those lines. So for, for small artists, you know, or smaller like me, like I don't have, you know, a million streams on a song. So (laughs) that that's, you know, it takes a long time for you to actually get, you know, really paid through that. So if you can buy somebody's vinyl or buy somebody's album or t-shirt or whatever, that's how you can, oh, somebody just sent me money right now. So Uh (laughs) yes, if you want to Venmo me too, you can. I hate doing that, but I'll put, I'll put my, I told her to Venmo in. So (laughs) you did. (laughs) I'll put my Venmo on here. It's just Whitney Shea. So if you feel like Venmoing and you feel like donating, you can. But that, that's been a hard thing for me is I don't like to ask people for help. I like to do everything. So that's another hard lesson that I've learned this year is let people help you. They want to help. They want, you know. But yeah, now people have time. Some people have money. Some people don't have money. Yeah. But, you know, like, like for me, I used to watch live music once or twice a week. So, like, those the, – the tickets and the money that I'd spend going to those shows – I kind of now have because yes. I haven't gone to a show since end of February, which I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so strange. So please, if you do have the financial means to donate, you know, please donate, please Venmo Whitney because she's going to perform for us. Yay! <laughs> Are we going to do that right now? We're going to do it right now. Okay. I'm logging into my computer. Okay. So I'm going to sing stand up i feel like it's so funny i feel like i've heard this song so much so hopefully you guys haven't heard this song too much (laughs) okay you heard somebody talking about me and you didn't know what to say they got to know me all the sound when i really act that way how you gonna let someone we don't know and everything we found let a lie become the truth and that would be the stop stand up when you know what's wrong you try to play it safe and sound but you miss me when i'm gone come on stand up when you know what's wrong no you better stand up trust and consideration never ask some more we both know how hard to just find something we're fighting for. Now we're stepping on a shattered staircase, just four steps from the door. Once the stars will hit our eyes, now we're staring out at the floor. Stand up when you know what's wrong. You try to play it safe and sound, but don't miss me when I'm gone. Come on, stand up when you know what's wrong. No, you better stand up. And this is Laura Chavez on guitar. And she's gonna be on the CD release. I can't wait to play with horns again. so much energy. I couldn't stand up because I'm actually sitting down. (laughs) 
I hope if someone else who's watching this was dancing. <laughs> I hope you guys are dancing. Were you dancing? <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys have any questions for Whitney, please feel free to put them in the chat. And oh, we'll yeah. What other instruments do I want to learn? I want to learn all of the instruments <laughs> all the time. So I have, I could pull it out. I have a sax, a baritone saxophone in my room, actually, that I should be practicing. I have a guitar, and I specifically want to learn slide guitar. That's, like, really what I play. So like, cool. Um, and I have a keyboard and a bass downstairs, too. So I love to play everything. But mm -hmm. it's, you know, so many instruments, so little time. Right. But at least they're all in your house. Yes, that's true. Right. They're, they're here. So when I get inspiration, I've got my little <laughs> cigar box guitar right here that my friend Joe gave me. So that's another thing that I'm going to play slide on that. So Awesome. Very cool. You have another song for us as well? I do. So um, they were asking, what's the next song going to be about? So um, this next song is called I Thought We Were Through. So this is about when you're dating somebody and you guys break up and then you kind of are, are okay with it and then they kind of keep coming back around in your life and you're like what i thought this was over i thought we were through so that's the premise to this song <laughs> We made up our minds We'd be better off alone It took us some time To figure it out on our own Was I reading you wrong? Cause you blew up my phone When I thought you were gone What am I to do? Thought we were through Thought we were through Thought we, we were through Well, you had to choose And it wasn't me You had me to lose So you could be free Are you keeping me around? I don't know up from down On this merry-go-round I'm so confused Thought we were through Thought we were through, thought we were through. You think I'm just gonna wait around? Honey, I am not your backup plan. Can you tell from my voice that I am immature? Figured it out, so why can you? Ooh, I think we're through. I think we're through. I, I think we're through. So this is Kaz Kazanoff, the producer of the album, playing tenor saxophone. Someone else, do 
you think I can't tell? To think I'm a fool. I thought we were through. I thought we were through. I thought we were through. talk about singing songs that you're passionate about that mean something to you like we feel it well thank you oh thank you guys appreciate it yes. yeah you know I, I think that especially in the kind of music that I love to sing I mean it's meant to be felt you know it's meant to you know oh, it, thanks, John. it needs to like yeah it's, it's that kind of music like it has to be genuine it has to be passionate there's a lot of pain behind it, but that's okay because then it's shared with everybody. So I think that's so important. Somebody says, hope to see you in Norway one day after things open oh, up. Oh, wow. I've never been to Norway and I'm dying to go. I'm dying. Oh. <laughs> I would love to come to Norway. Yes, Say hi to my friend, Alex Peterson. He played on my second album and my producer, Kit Anderson, they're both from Norway actually, so. Yeah, shout out to Norway. Very cool. Thank you so much for joining us. So are there any last words that you have for the audience? Anything, you know, that you want to talk about or finish up with? I just want to see everybody on the 20th, for one. Yeah. And also, I want everybody to just be kind to one another. Because you know what? We need that this year. Everybody's having a hard time. And the more that we can just spread joy and be good to one another, I think we're going to get through this crazy year much yeah. easier. Definitely. Please be kind. Please go to Whitney's album release party on the 20th. She also has a merch discount that we mentioned earlier in this interview. 2020. Yes. <laughs> Don't already. Please follow Whitney on all social channels. See what she's up to. See when the new music is coming up, any live streams, anything of that caliber. And also, please make sure to follow me because I interview amazing musicians just like Whitney all the time. Ashley Live. Check her out. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your Sunday with us and giving us your, you know, your beautiful voice and having a wonderful conversation. And yes, please, please, please support Whitney. Thank you so much for having me, Ashley. This has been a pleasure. Yes. Have a good day and stay safe. Bye. Have a great day. Thanks. Goodbye.